Welcome everybody. This video we're going to talk about updating an individual resource. In this video we're going to be talking about updating a customer. So the previous episode or two we talked about how we could retrieve just an individual customer providing an ID through the URL. This is really important because now that we have a way to basically identify an individual item in our database, we can start adding new methods to interact with a single item. So specifically the ability to update a single item and the ability to delete a single item. So once we have those created, the summary of possibilities will be the ability to get all customers, add a customer, same exact URL path, just going from get to post, get an individual customer by ID, update a customer, and delete a customer. So we basically have create, read, update, and delete, but we actually have two reads, one to read all the customers and one to read an individual customer. This video is going to be talking about updating a customer, and we're going to also learn about post versus put, which are two popular methods used for updating data. This video is sponsored by Ultra Edit. They have been supporting this series, so if you want to support this channel and you're interested in giving this editor a try, I would encourage you to use the link down below. This is a highly customizable text editor, the editor we have been using throughout this series. So definitely check it out and let's get back to the video. So when we want to create an endpoint to update a single customer, it's going to look very similar to this one we created in the previous video or two, where we have to provide an ID so that we know which customer to update. So let's go ahead and go down here and say app.get and provide that same path, so slash API slash customers slash colon ID. And we will provide the callback function real quick, request response. And there we go. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to first get that customer ID. I often just like to assign it to a constant so I can access it later a little bit easier. So we'll say customer ID it comes from request.params.id. And my bad, this should not be get, this should be either post or put. So we're going to use put, and I'm gonna talk about some of the differences between these in a moment, but let's go ahead and just set this to put right now and get a basic example working. The function that we're going to want to use is customer.replace1. And this is going to take two things, the first being an object containing what filter to find this customer by, which is going to be the uh, customer ID. The second being the new customer that you want to replace it with. So we'll say request dot body. So we're actually going to include a body with the new updated customer data. So this is interesting because we're not just updating individual attributes of a customer. We're just going to take the original customer, change it as we wish, and provide the entire customer object back to the server. That's why we are using replace one. This is going to return a result. So we'll say const result and then we'll send a response back to the user. And I know ahead of time here that the thing that we're going to want to do is give an updated count. So we'll say updated count is result.modified count. But if you wanted to see all those options, you could just console log it here. So console log, and we'll just throw in result here. So let's start with this and talk about how we will use this endpoint. So we'll head over to Postman and we will get some data. So let's go ahead and get a valid customer. So I know already that this ID exists, but you could just get them all and grab an ID if you need. So this is the ID we want. And to update this, what we'll do is we will take the entire customer object and include this in the body. So we can go to raw, JSON, and then provide that here. And if we wanted to update this, such as fix this spelling mistake and put their name back to how it was, and you could fix the indentation here. It's not required, but I'm just going to do it for cleanliness. Now, the last thing we need to talk about is the method here. It's going to be put. So hit send, and it says updated count one. Over in the console, you can see that object, the result. 
So it's going to have the modified count, and that is the value that we are returning to the user. The only things that we can remove from these are those two attributes. We hit send, this is still going to work, and if we switch this to get, we can get that entire customer, and we can see we still have the ID on there and the underscore underscore V, which I think is for mongoose, so you can just ignore that. However, if we removed one of these and changed the industry, let's say, to something more important, like, I don't know, gaming or something. And let's go ahead and switch this over to put, hit send. It says updated count one, and if we go and retrieve that data, it does have industry gaming, but the name has been removed. That's because we are replacing the entire object. We'll talk about how to update individual things in a couple episodes, but for now, this is the way I would recommend doing it. So now let's take a moment to talk about the difference between put and post. Important thing to know is that this is convention. You can use either one for whatever purpose you want. So it's really up to you to implement it the way you desire, but it is important to follow these conventions when you can because users who use your API are going to expect them to work a certain way. The way I've done it is I will typically use post for adding a resource. So when I want to add a new customer and I'll use put to update a customer or I'm kind of updating a customer, but I'm really just replacing it with the same customer with modified data, if that makes sense. But this is seen as an update action. So that's why I'm using put. The other important thing is generally when something can be repeated multiple times without consequences, that's when you might want to use put. And that concept is known as it being item potent. So when you're posting a resource, when you're adding a customer, if I slapped the send button multiple times, it might add multiple customers into the database. However, with updating a user, I could replace the same user over and over again with the same attributes and the end result is still the same. We updated the original customer. So you can slap the send button as many times as you want. I think that is the key main difference and you will need to make sure that if you want to follow that structure that you implement it in that way. So if you're using put but you're adding a resource, well then people might get a little bit confused. Also another good indicator is if you are providing an ID, use put because that's going to be working on a resource that already exists in the database and you're not adding a resource. I'm using resource, which hopefully you got it figured out by now, but it's just a general word to describe the item that we are adding or removing or editing from the database. But it's important to know that this is not perfectly agreed upon. So here you can see two answers that are literally the exact opposite. But I think this is the most important thing. So definitely read about this more. And the question here is, what is the difference between post and put in HTTP? Now, you also see that put is used to create or replace a resource. There is actually a third method that you often see when it comes to this conversation, and that is patch. If you are updating an item using individual attributes, you know, you're not providing a whole new object to replace the original, that is when you would want to consider using patch. And that is a more proper technical update because we're actually just changing the attributes in the database versus replacing the entire thing. So we're going to talk about patch here very soon. So stay tuned, but it's not gonna be a whole lot different, but so we're going to actually be implementing some of this stuff in a React application. So I'm excited for that. We'll be doing that pretty soon. I kind of got a little distracted with the talking. I didn't quite finish the code here. I still want to have the try catch. So I will surround what we have with try and indent these lines here. And then we'll say catch and give them a general error. So res.status of 500 and what we want to tell them is pretty similar to the example up here we'll just say error something went wrong and that'll do for now bro what is wrong with me i keep forgetting to put my curly braces i'm so sorry thank you all for watching in the next video we'll talk about deleting a resource which is a lot simpler than this one so we don't have to talk about different options and all that stuff so we're just going to get to it i'll see you in the next video